This summer, Anadarko Petroleum Corporation from Texas intends to begin exploratory drilling directly off the Otago Peninsula in the Canterbury Basin. Shell also intends to drill for oil and gas off our coast in the near future in the Great South Basin. Deep sea oil drilling is of major concern in the Otago region of New Zealand because of the alarming risks it poses to our environment, the climate and our people's livelihoods. From, from my perspective, um, deep sea oil drilling any, anywhere in the world is, is a bad idea. And the reason is, is that any, any marginal oil will contribute to climate change. And if, even as we're going, we have to start reducing carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So any further addition is going to make things worse. Um, marginal oil is what um, Bill McKibben and Jim Hansen say are just not allowed at all. So from a straight climate change perspective, you just can't drill for deep sea oil. So New Zealand's a bit special in that we have 38 of the world's whale and dolphin species here in our waters, 38 out of about 80. So about almost half of the world's whale and dolphin species here in our waters. And we have two species that are only found here, the Hector's dolphin and the New Zealand sea lion are two endemic marine mammals here. So that's quite a special thing to be endangering. Now, at current rates of producing carbon, of dumping carbon in the atmosphere, um, that means uh, we will have to stop putting any more carbon into the atmosphere within 12 to 13 years. And then no more, ever, right? Uh, so in other words, that's why I picked the kind of 10-year horizon, you know. Um, it is possible, one would have to hope, uh, that political will will arise such that in 10 years' time, that will be the end of the carbon dumping uh, industry. Um, that in turn may mean something close to the end of the oil industry, right? I mean, I know it's a very radical suggestion, but what the planet's going to do to us is very radical too. So, you know, one has to hope that uh, political will will be there uh, to make effectively, if you like, the, the oil industry a, a dead industry, a dying industry. Why would we want to dig more oil out of the ground, okay, or out of the sea in this case? Now, if, if that's the case, and I recognise that's a radical scenario, but I point out that if we don't do that, the consequences for the planet as a whole and for the city are even more radical. So, you know, we have to be a bit brave at this stage. Um, if, if that's uh, what happens, uh, the effect on Dunedin of having invested um, and structured its infrastructure to support that industry will be pretty dire. You know, if we become the Aberdeen of the South, which is a very attractive notion, been to Aberdeen, you know, it's been very good for Aberdeen for a long period of time. Bergen would be another place in Norway that would spring to mind. You know, Norway is an extremely prosperous country. It's very tempting to look at those potential riches and say, I'll have a piece of that, thank you, you know. Um, but if in fact the future for this industry is actually really quite short term, 10 years max, maybe 20, and certainly in 20 years time, if we keep chucking carbon into the atmosphere at the rate we're doing now, um, the political pressures will really start to, to bite. That's one of the things that we get told, but what about the jobs? It would be great to have drilling here because of the jobs. Okay, well, the Burl report that was contracted by the Minister of Economic Development last year talks about the scenarios if there was oil and gas discovered off our shores. And what it comes down to is really the more complex, or the, the further offshore the well is, the more complex it is, and the less likely they would use local people for jobs. It's a very highly specialised field. Deep sea drilling is extremely difficult and dangerous, and these companies will only use people that they have a track record with already. And there is only the Taranaki region that has any kind of track record in this kind of industry. But even Taranaki, they've not done deep drilling, they've not done deep sea drilling. It's completely new to New Zealand. So I think this idea of jobs really needs to be looked at very, very closely. In terms of uh, deep sea drilling um, or exploration, what's in it for the fishery? Um, and if uh, the answer is 
there's nothing in it for the fishery or nothing positive for the fishery, then um, I would question why we would want uh, a foreign owned company coming in here extracting um, whatever they will extract, leaving us with the risk and none of the, none of the gains. But um, as I see so far, we're left with all the risk and, and none of the benefits uh, from anything that um, currently has been proposed. So um, I would say, uh, <laughs> no, don't do it. Scientists who've worked on the um, Gulf of Mexico oil spill have seen dolphins literally swimming through oil slicks and breathing in the very toxic fumes that are right on the water surface. Uh, they've also seen uh, dolphins looking at burning oil on the water surface. So here were these dolphins with their head out, heads out of the water seeing the sea in front of them literally burn and I can only imagine how bewildering that must have been for those animals and um, the toxicity of the environment that these dolphins were swimming through. Now bad as that is, in those cases they would have been species like bottlenose dolphins and other dolphins that were found right around the world. Here in New Zealand if that same th problem happened we'd be dealing with about 7,000 hectares dolphins that are found here and nowhere else in the world. So the stakes are that much higher here in New Zealand. At the last Shell consultation meeting that I attended about two months ago, Phil, their environmental officer, showed a film that the Tangaroa had made of the seabed and the sea just the week beforehand. And his main commentary as we went through this film was, as you can see, as you can see, there's nothing there, there's nothing there. The ocean, according to Shell, seems to be empty of any, anything with any environmental worth. New Zealand's the best place in the world by far for seabirds. This is the field guide to the birds of New Zealand. And we start off at the beginning with one lot of albatrosses. Second page is albatrosses. Yet more albatrosses. Yet more albatrosses. And then we get on to the shearwater. One page. Mutton birds, TT. The little shearwaters. And then there are the petrels, and we're up to plate 10. Cape pigeons. And then there's lots of little grey ones. The prions, the gadfly petrels, the bigger black ones, and the tiny little sparrow-sized storm petrels, including the newly discovered New Zealand storm petrel, which was rediscovered only 10 years ago. And that's not all. We're then on to penguins. Four pages of penguins, gannets, shags, and then we get on to herons, but that doesn't include the common seabirds that you might see around here. It doesn't include the sea gulls, the ordinary gulls, and it doesn't include the terns. You know, what do your family think of, of tar sands? And he said they think they're great because they give you jobs. It's really a matter of whether you want the economy or you want the earth. Um, you've got a choice. Um, there's a famous quip going around that uh, it may not be economic to save the earth. Uh, you know, that's about where it stands. You either go for conventional economics and save jobs or you save the place that we live in. It's as easy as that. Now if this, if this turn um, specialises, uh, sets itself up to be a substantial uh, support for the oil industry uh, with all kinds of infrastructural uh, consequences inside the city for that. You know, New Plymouth, Taranaki springs to mind as well. Again, you know, it's been very good for Taranaki. Uh, but if we do that and all of a sudden the tap gets turned off, <laughs> uh, it's, it's the classic case of having invested in the wrong industry and invested perhaps heavily in the wrong industry. And then you face a major turnaround exercise. I mean, so many of the assets that, you know, one can imagine a specialised delivery um, uh, port being built somewhere uh, off here to pick up the oil and so on. All of that will be worth nothing. Um, so I think it's really important for a place like Dunedin, faced with this extremely tempting um, uh, opportunity in present terms, you know, it looks really attractive today under current prices. 
very important, I think, to take a pretty hard look at what the, I'm not even going to call it a long-term future, 10 years is nothing, right? Um, what the medium-term future might look like. Uh, and any careful analysis of that, I think, would force people to at least ask the question of uh, the sustainability of, of this particular industry and why would we want to get too closely involved with it. And then of course the next stage is usually exploratory drilling and I didn't realise until quite recently that that is the most dangerous phase of uh, oil and gas exploration because you are drilling into a body of oil or gas and you're not yet sure exactly what's in there, uh, the, the physical and chemical characteristics and the amount of pressure it's under. So the um, Gulf of Mexico oil spill of course was from an exploratory well uh, and New Zealand, the New Zealand legislation has absolutely nothing in it to stop uh, that whole sequence of events occurring from seismic surveys right through to exploratory drilling. No environmental impact assessments need to be done uh, to that point. The environmental impact assessment would only be done after the exploratory drilling has revealed enough oil or gas in a commercial quantity and the company applies for a permit to commercially exploit it. So there's a whole bunch of impacts that have already happened by then and we have nothing to stop them or nothing even to look at what might be the environmental impacts of those activities. Oh, so the, the ocean out here is called Te Whakatāpukapuka Tāwhiki which is the, uh, the turbulent ocean of, of Tāwhiki. No, well, I mean, just that we're riffing on. Hmm. Might not be a. It might be a fairly difficult place to do business. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the old people didn't uh, name places <laughs> lightly, <laughs> and I think, um, yeah, it's a, it's extremely it's extremely rough out there. That's where all the weather comes from. So, um, yeah, I'd, I'd say, I, I would hope that um, yeah, the plan B is um, is a really good plan B. <laughs> because uh, it's very unforgiving out there, very unforgiving. In May 2013, 600 people joined hands on Kaikoura's beach to say no to Anadako deep sea drilling in the Canterbury Basin. In 2011, Te Whanau Apunui said no to Petrobras deep sea drilling in the Royal Kumara Basin off the East Cape and won. Together, up and down this coast, we can do the same. Join us. <laughs>